first step is to identify what kinds of goods and animals there were in Europe before the age of exploration. And the second step is to do the same thing for the Americas. So you look at Europe and you ask what kinds of animals and plants and diseases were there. You look at the Americas and you ask what kinds of plants and animals and diseases were there. You should be getting this down in your notes. This is important. That's the second step. And then in the third step, you just see what transferred. What went from Europe to the Americas and back? And then in the fourth step, you ask what the impact was. Who can tell me what the first step in analyzing the Colombian exchange was? Or is? Premier, what's the first step in analyzing the Colombian exchange? Premier, what's the first step in analyzing the Colombian exchange? Animals. The age of exploration. Yeah. Marquise, what's the second step? Yeah, do the same for the Americas. Teresa, what's the third step? Yeah, louder, please. Louder. Pick out what transferred. And Janie, what's the fourth step? I'm sorry? You can't see that? This is the last step, it's number four. Ask. Who can help Jane? What was the fourth step? Yeah, take one. Yeah, ask what was the impact. All right, folks. This map here is a map of the Columbia Exchange. And I'm going to model for you guys what analyzing the Columbia Exchange looks like. And then we're going to start our play. So first step, identify what kinds of goods and animals there were in Europe before the age of exploration. So if you look over here, it says grains, livestock, diseases. And I'm thinking about what kinds of goods and animals and diseases there were in Europe. By the way, this looks like it's in Africa. Actually, it's in Europe. So these are the goods, animals, and diseases there were in Europe before the exchange. Who can read me what uh, what it says under grains? Take one. Could you do that for us? Wheat, rice, barley. Barley. Yeah. Oats. And oats. Yep. Janie, would you read what it says under livestock, please? Can you do it again? Yeah. Would you read what it says under livestock, please? Who can help Janie? What does it say under livestock? Tell me. Um, cattle, sheep. And yes. Janie, what does it say under livestock? Sheep, pigs, and horses. Yep. And then finally, under diseases, it says things like smallpox, influenza, typhus. So I'm thinking about those things. Those are the things that got transferred from Europe to the Americas. So in this column where it says what transferred from Europe to the Americas, I'm going to put things like wheat and barley and I'm going to pick out some animals, sheep, and horses. Now let's go to the Americas and see what transfer. Oh, and also I should pick out some diseases. So smallpox was the example that Daquan and I used. So smallpox transferred. Now let's think about what transferred from the Americas to Europe. So here we are. What? Let's think about what transferred from the Americas to Europe. Who can pick out something for me that started in the Americas and got transferred to Europe? Nate, what started out in the Americas and transferred to Europe? This map is in your notes also. You can look at your notes. Pineapple. I'm sorry? Pineapple. Yeah, pineapple. Pretty example. <laughs> Come here. Only sweet potatoes. Yeah, sweet potatoes. One more example. Teresa, pick out something that was in the Americas and that got transferred to Europe. We're looking at this map. It says the Colombian Exchange, and there are things that started in the Americas and transferred to Europe. Who can help Teresa? Marquise? Sugar yeah, sugar cane. Perfect. What was the impact on the Americas? Well, we talked just a second ago about what the impact was, and it doesn't really say it on this map, but from the example that I gave, day one, I'm thinking about the diseases that transferred from Europe to the Americas. Why was it a problem? We talked about this a minute ago. Why was it a problem that diseases transferred from Europe to the Americas? Taylor. Because people, like, they didn't know that they had them, and they started getting them. Yep. And, and
and then what happened, uh, Jamie, what happened when Daquan, in our example, went back to the town he lived in with Pomir and Marquise? Say it louder. Yeah, he spread the diseases. Exactly right. So as a result of that, millions and millions of, why is there talking? Millions and millions of natives died. So the impact on the Americas was disease spread. And the impact on Europe, who can tell me what they think the impact on Europe was? This is kind of a tough question, but I think you guys can get it. So we just said that the impact on the Americas was that there were loads of diseases that spread and millions of people died. What do you think happened if all that transferred to Europe was food, like pineapples and sugar cane, which are the two that we identified? Raise your hand. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, they had a lot of goods. Really, the only benefit, or really the only impact on Europe, was a big fat plus sign. Europe got a lot of new products out of this, and that was a good thing. Why would new products and new plants to grow be a good thing? Come here. Yeah. There were two things Kumir said that were really smart. The first thing is a new experience, which is good, better food to eat, and the second thing is you could sell things like that in Europe. All right, turn the page, please. So we are now going to put Columbus on trial, and I want to give you all some instructions before that happens. Uh, Mr. Thomas, would you take Jenny's phone, please? And give her to her. Um, here, here are the instructions on the play. Folks, your eyes are either up here or they're on your paper. Everyone's eyes on me in five, four, three, two, one. I have Premier's eyes, Marquise's eyes, Teresa's perfect. All right, here are our instructions today. Today we're going to do something really interesting. We're going to put Christopher Columbus on trial. And the reason this is interesting is that most of the time you guys are just doing readings. Uh, Teresa, eyes up here. Most of the time you guys are doing readings or you are just learning about the material that you're responsible for in class. Today that material is going to come alive and you all are going to get to play different characters in this narrative. All right. Janie, raise your hand. Janie, raise your hand, please. All right. Janie's not raising her hand, but Janie is going to play Christopher Columbus. In the I'm sorry. Raise your hand. What's up? I'm your friend. Uh, you, Premier, are a witness, but I'm going to get there in just a second. Two people are going to play Christopher Columbus. Janie is going to play Christopher Columbus for the first half, and then they won. No, sorry, Marquise. I'm sorry. So here, here's the story. Janie is going to play Christopher Columbus. Folks, why, why is there talking? Eyes on me. Janie is going to play Christopher Columbus for the first half, and then Marquise, you're going to play Columbus for the second half. The day, you're going to be the prosecutor. You're going to be the prosecuting attorney. Teresa, you're going to be the defense attorney. Kumir, you're going to be witness number one, who's a Native American whose family was killed by Columbus. And Daquan, you're going to play witness number two. Taylor, you have a really important job, which is you're the jury. So you get to decide at the end of the trial whether or not Christopher Columbus is guilty. I'm sorry? The judge is Mr. Folks, you need to raise your hand. Uh, the judge is Mr. Thomas, and I'm playing the bailiff. All right, I need you to do two things, please. The first is turn in your packet to where it says people versus Christopher Columbus. And the second thing is Marquise and Premier, stand up. I'm going to move your desk back. Teresa and Daquan, do the same thing. Do this silently, please. Stand by your desk, and I'm going to move it. Ready, set, go. So the two of you need to be standing up, please. That's fine. All right. I'm going to turn the desk back this way. I move your chairs around. Take one. This way. Jam your chair. And Marquise, you and Kamir are going to sit there and just going to be facing the other way. Alright, folks, we're going to get started. Turn, please, to where it says People of the Americas. 
versus Christopher Columbus. I'm going to give you one last set of instructions before we start here. So here's the way this script works. Remember what part you've been assigned. I'm going to read those one more time. Remember what part you've been assigned. You are to speak only when it's your turn to speak. The way that a play works, uh, this is just a review because I'm sure you guys have done this before. The way a play works is that the person who is speaking has his or her name written here, then a colon, and then a line. So if it's your turn to speak, you're going to speak. Unless it's your turn to speak, you are silent, listening along, or you are reading and annotating along. Also, we're going to stop every couple of minutes and do some activities so you all have a chance to engage with the material. Before we start, does anyone have any questions? No? Great. OK, here are your parts one more time. Janie, you play Christopher Columbus for the first half. Marquise, you play Christopher Columbus for the second half. Nate, you're the prosecuting attorney. Teresa, you're the defense attorney. Kumir, you are witness number one. Daquan, you are witness number two. We'll tell you when it's your turn to go. And then Taylor, you play the jury. All right, folks. We're going to get started. All rise. Everyone stand up. Everyone stand up now, please. Teresa, what's the story? Stand up, please. Janie, what's the story? Stand up, please. Because this is the way the court really works. All right, our judge for today is the Honorable Mr. Thomas. Mr. Thomas, take it away. All right, you may be seated. We are here to hear the case of Christopher Columbus versus the people. Dear Miss Defense Attorney, please present your case. You're up, where it says defense attorney. I thought you said I was prosecuting Yeah, Teresa, you're up. Where it says your honor. So loud that you think you're yelling. Janie, you're up. Teresa, your line is Mr. Columbus, first things first, where it says defense attorney. Okay, folks, take 30 seconds and jot down an answer to these first two questions. Do you believe Columbus was credible, and what about this dialogue intrigues you? When you've done that, turn and talk to the person sitting next to you. So that's uh, Daquan and Marquise, Nate and Taylor, Janie, you, and Premier, what are you doing? You and Premier and Marquise on the motor here to talk to you. So do that now, please. Oh, yeah. So we're going to look at look, 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 look,
twos want good people. So, you should be right. Do you believe Columbus was a credible witness? So was he good enough to write? Is he good enough to stand up for himself in court? Should he be able to do that? Number two, what about this dialogue intrigues you? What do you find most interesting about this dialogue between Columbus and Fitz? And tell me, on the first one, you're telling me why. Why was the numbers of the credible witness?
go deep. So, stop the here for just a second. What exactly did Columbus do? What the heck did he do? On your chart. Okay, on your answer number one. What exactly did Columbus do? Now, I'm glad you want to share. We will share out too. And then number two, do you believe that Columbus did anything wrong based on the way you see here? Did Columbus do anything wrong? Why do you think he did something wrong? Use the information in the dialogue. So they say that he did wrong because, I mean, he was going out to gold. He ended up enslaving people. What did he do? Was he wrong in his vision? Ha <laughs> ha. 